will always go up. So the answer to this question is not how much it will cost me to start a business, is what type of business I need to start up in Dubai to make these costs irrelevant to my business. Mm -hmm. That's why you have seen those who won the Disruptive Award, businesses who managed to have over 100% or 150% of growth in their businesses in the last two years with all challenges and the minefield that I just described. Mm -hmm which means you need to think about the type of business, the type of technology, or not necessarily technology, type of business and type of value chain that you would create that much value which would lower your operational and startup yeah. cost. I think with that, uh, that's the most appropriate uh, message that we get, that know your business and how you fit into the, the operating environment. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I have to uh, end the panel uh, discussion because our next speaker is uh, waiting. So I think if you have further questions, you can always ask the panel offline. Um, I would like to thank my panel for their views and their uh, contributions. Uh, let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Alexander Williams and the panelists. Another round of applause. I would like to continue with a quote from Henry Ford. The only real mistake is the one from which we learn nothing. So what happens when you choose to ignore warning signs? That's what the moderator and the panelists in the next discussion will talk about. Ignoring the iceberg, what you cannot see can hurt you. Mr. Gavin D. Sousa, Director and Practice Head Excellence Plus is an HR consultant and corporate trainer who is passionate and obsessive about human resources. Please give a welcoming round of applause to the moderator who will introduce the panel, Mr. Gavin D. Sousa. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon, and uh, welcome to a very interesting 45 minutes. The next 45 minutes is definitely a moment where we're going to dig deeper into the underlying elements that is driving industry today. The topic says it all, ignoring the iceberg. What you cannot see can harm you. Let's invite our esteemed panelists. Please give them a round of applause as they join us up on the dais. Thank you. Moving on from your left to right, we have uh, Mr. Ratnesh Kumar, who's the group HR director at DM Astra Healthcare. Seated uh, next to him is Dr. Anand Menon, Strategic Director at Excellence Plus, an HR consulting and corporate learning firm. Uh, right next to Anand is uh, Dr. Prem Kumar, who is Vice President at uh, Shoba Development, leading the HR team. We have Akram Miknas, who is Chairman MCN. We have Ahmed Mbabi, Regional HR Director at Oracle. And finally, we have uh, uh, Rajni Kant, who is the Leadership Trainer at Win Win Consulting and Leadership Firm. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. When we were putting this panel discussion together and we set the topic, ignoring the iceberg, there were many questions raised. What do we mean by ignoring the iceberg? And to really get to that, I'd like to take us to a very famous movie we've all heard of. Either we've watched it or we've heard of it. And with a show of hands, the movie Titanic. Most of us, some of us have grown up hearing the story. And the question that that movie asks is, why did the ship sink? The obvious answer, it hit the iceberg. That's where most of us movie buffs stop. 
But then we draw a parallel with the sinking of the Titanic and we take the next question. Which part of the iceberg sunk the Titanic? The bottom part, the part that was unseen, the part that was unknown, that really ripped up the hull of the famous Titanic. And ladies and gentlemen, from that story, we lead on to our panel discussion for this afternoon. What are organizations and governments missing when it comes to preparing their organizations for success? With that connection, Let's begin with this panel discussion. And we have a question for our panelists, and we'll invite each one of them to take it, beginning with yourself, Ratnesh. The question is one that goes out to all our panelists. How important is going below the surface to your industry and function? Why should organizations, large and small, invest valuable resources in uncovering the unknown and hidden. Over to you, Ratnesh. So if you like whatever I say, I'm, my name is Ratnesh, and if you don't like whatever I say, I'm Kevin. Uh, uh, see, uh, uh, the, the, I will give it a more of an HR or industry perspective uh, in terms of my views on what is there over the water and what is under the water. So possibly from an industry that I come from, which is healthcare, um, I would say three aspects that one would look at. What hits you is, is, is always too late. Uh, first one uh, being uh, the organization culture. See, every organization as we walk in seems very normal, pretty okay, it's life as usual, and people don't realize what it means, the culture that we provide to the employees. Culture starts right from the leadership, how leadership behaves with their employees, how employee is comfortable. It, 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 it not only helps in retaining the employee even for attracting, I mean, each one of us, if you look deep down, uh, we will agree that although we may not disclose, we may not talk about it, but there'll be certain organization in our name or in our mind that we will say, oh, these are the set of companies that possibly won't join. Many a times when we make offers in the organization, sometimes people decline the offers, not for any other reason, just because they have heard something about the organization when the culture is not good, culture is not bad. So I think culture starts right from what kind of environment we provide to the employees in the organization, about the empowerment, about the style, about the values, the matching of values between the employees and the organization. So that is number one. Whether are we providing the right culture in the organization where an employees feel comfortable to work and stay for long, number one. Number two, again, as I said, culture, again, it's not seen, but then when it hits you, it's, it's obviously pretty late because culture is not something which is built overnight. It, it takes a while, it takes decades for the culture to build and, uh, and to unbuild it or to break it, it takes another few decades. So that is one. Number two, I would say, again, employee engagement. Now, again, I mean, we do a lot of surveys, every company, I mean, most of the companies, they do, they do various employee engagement surveys. But then again, if you walk into an organization, if you walk into the cafeteria, if you go into the workplace, everything seems very normal. All of them are talking to each other, happily coexisting. You see the engagement results, then you see, oh, I'm 81% engagement score, 82% engagement score. But I think engagement is something, especially in our context. See, many a times people compare healthcare with hospitality. And I have a fundamental disconnect there. I say, in a hospitality sector, people go there by choice. In healthcare, given a choice, nobody wants to go. So the complete mindset change. So that's the type of emotions from our customer or from employees that we handle on a day-to-day -day basis, where engagement becomes extremely, extremely important. Because everybody, every customer, every patient, every attendant that is walking into your clinic or into your hospital is walking not by choice, but because one doesn't have a choice. It's in despair, those emotions. Now, how to handle those emotions in that kind of environment? Unless you handle employees' engagement at a, at a very different level, wherein people are committed, people enjoy doing what they're doing. It doesn't work. So I would say number two is the engagement. How do we keep people highly engaged who are able to give that comfort, to give that consolation to the uh, customers or to the patients and their 
families or their attendants. Sure, thank you. And number three, and the last one possibly I would say, in terms of, again, above the uh, water and below the water, is again, we are in a sector which possibly seen as life as usual, which is like healthcare, hospitals, and clinics. But the way the world is moving, I think the third one is innovation. Irrespective of which sector we are in, unless we keep innovating, we keep changing the way we are operating, even in the healthcare sector. I mean, uh, all of us have seen what has happened to Nokia, right? Or what has happened to Kodak. Now, healthcare also, the way healthcare is evolving, I mean, we firmly believe that it's only a matter of time where in your primary and some part of secondary healthcare will move on to app, where everything's available right at your doorstep. So third, third, I would say, unless we keep innovating, keep changing our ways of work, keep addressing those customer needs in a very different manner. Technology is a part of life we can't ignore. How do we use technology in healthcare? So possibly I'll say, these are the three things which I would say, they may seem very normal. It takes a whole lot of time, decades for the organization to build and change. But unless we do that, I mean, when it comes and hits you, it's, it's, it's possibly too late. Thank you, Ratnesh. Moving on to Dr. Anand. The question being, how important is it going to go below the surface, and why should organizations invest in going below the surface? Okay, uh, Gavin, I think the answer to that is in the uh, headline of what we're discussing today. Uh, but I would like to take it a little further. It says, uh, ignoring the iceberg, what you do not see can hurt you, but what you choose to ignore will hurt you even more. And I think that is primarily one of the challenges of organizations in this part of the world. By choice, we actually choose to ignore the people side of the business. Now, what do I mean by that? We don't wake up in the morning going into our companies saying that I'm not going to pay attention to my people. What we tend to do is we wake up every morning thinking about which are the new systems I can bring into my business, how can I have a standard operating procedure, how can I bring in software, how do I take my branding and make it more attractive above the line, and the millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars gets put into all of that above the line. But by choosing to focus on these things, we are choosing by exclusion to leave our people out. And this is what happens. Let's take a simple example. We have so many people sitting in this room. Why should we be uh, focusing on below the surface? Everyone in this room has got a smartphone. Everybody has got a phone which has got software on it, tools, apps, everything designed to make life easy. But how many of us can actually say that we are effective in using that phone? Because we haven't been trained on how to use it. We are strong in one app or another one or one particular uh, tool that we're using on the phone. But the phone can do a whole lot more. So all of us are carrying incredibly powerful instruments with us, but we've never been trained on how to become effective in using a simple thing like a smartphone. So in organizations, you have the same problem. If you look at growth globally, whether you get into business or get into nature, a giant tree stands tall only because of the strength of its root, which is again below the surface. The tallest building on the planet stands on a strong foundation. And here we are trying to erect businesses and companies to become global benchmarks on shaking foundations. So that's in, in a nutshell to answer why. Thank you, Dr. Anand. Uh, moving on to Dr. Prem Naidu. Thanks, Gavin. Uh, from a real estate perspective, where I represent both the developers and the contractors, we live in a world called VUCA. I coined the word called VUCA, which is very volatile, uncertain, and complex, and also it is ambiguous. So very important is we need to understand below the iceberg what it is in terms of talent acquisition and talent management. When you talk about the volatile, the talent acquisition itself, it starts with hiring the right talent, which starts because our industry works in a perspective that we need to be speed, there should be productivity, and there should be uh, two more uh, dimensions, which is talking about the transparency and the uh, uh, capacity to deliver on time. So here, the talent acquisition is very important from our industry. And moving on, once we hire the right talent, we need to manage them. That's another important dimension to such an industry, which is very volatile in nature. So. Uh, ma managing the talent becomes very important as uh, Ratnakar was also talking about employee engagement activities. But we insist that the capability building is very important from a uh, real estate background, which talks about various competencies, which is very important for the people to understand and enhance their competencies to deliver to the requirements of the customers. 
because we need to take care of the, uh, the rights of the investors, the rights of the business partners from an HR perspective. So it's very important for us from our both talent acquisition and talent management. Thank you, Dr. Prem. Moving on to Akram, why should organizations invest in going below the surface? How critical is it, especially to the SME? Well, you, you know, I think it's uh, co maybe coincidental that we are talking in Dubai, and I think uh, UAE in particular has been known to have faced many icebergs, many, and I mean many. But every time there's an iceberg, there was a jump ahead, uh, double-digit growth, and I think they faced the challenges with great, with great, uh, uh, astonishing actually, the world, with their great attitude towards success, succession and succeeding. And in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in my books, I always leave my hands on my pulse all the time. I mean the pulse of my business. I never, ever, Every day in the morning I wake up, I, my hand is on the pulse, I sleep, my hand on the pulse. I want to know exactly what's going on. It's not only the business, it's the people that work for the business, it's your, the role of the business in the community, and therefore we have to be careful to, and make sure that the pulse that we're reading exactly and therefore foreseeing the iceberg before it happens, and of course taking measures. I think... Uh, like every company has a philosophy, has a way of doing business. You should not, at moments, critical moments like this, change your philosophy or change your attitude. But on the contrary, I think you should take that attitude in a positive manner and take advantage of a situation and look at the cup, not half full, but full, completely full, and work with it accordingly. There are many opportunities when there is danger, and it is all a matter of attitude. That's my thinking, and that's my belief. Thank you very much, Mr. Akram. <laughs> Moving on to Ahmed. Sure, so um, adding to, to my, what my dear friends have, have mentioned, um, I want to give a different perspective, which is a little bit from an HR perspective, which is, um, as companies, we do invest a lot in infrastructure and ensuring that we have the right, right systems and tools in place. Um, but there is a very important element, which is the human capability. Um, and I think it's very important not to ignore the capabilities of the people. I mean, how capable are the people and what can they do with those tools and, um, and systems that you have in place? Um, and here it comes, which is the very thin line between um, um, doing things by systems for the people or having people really own the, the, the people, let's say, agenda as managers. That's a very thin line, so we need to help managers to be able to use the tools and tailor them to, be, to, to, to meet the requirements on the ground, which is the localization part. And that's, that's a big challenge for us. So we, we might have the right tools, but as in how do you bring this into really being something that you can use on the ground? Thank you, Amit. Thank you, Amit. Moving on, Rajnikanth, your thoughts, please. I think in the morning we had a lot of discussion about uh, the growth of many companies, but uh, everything was above the iceberg. I think below the iceberg we were not discussing about the people involved in the growth. I think one of the important aspects of organizations which have, which have to grow is to invest in people. And that is the difference. We hire a lot of intellectuals from different institutes to our corporate, which does not make our organization as an in intelligent organization, because there is a difference between the word intellect and intelligence. Intellect is acquiring skills, the logic, the acquiring skills, what you go in colleges, schools, what the competency company trains. But the intelligence is the application of that intelligence, apply, application of that intellect, or the application of the skills which we have learned. So any organization, if you have to really survive, it has to become an intelligent organization, for which people development becomes a very, very important aspect. And I think organizations should start investing in people and if you ask any entrepreneurs, any company uh, who came the morning or uh, the trucks of Ubers and so on, I think people would form a very, very important asset. The question to all these companies is, do we really start investing in people development? That's my statement. Thank you, Rajkant. Appreciate it. Uh, moving on with the responses that we've received, we have a question for each one of you gentlemen. And the question is specific to either the industry or the function you represent. So I'd like to begin with uh, Dr. Prem Kumar Naidu from Shoba. We all hear about the real estate sector. 
It's one that's in our face, very dynamic, fast-paced. <clears throat> Do the hidden elements in your industry change or remain constant? And can you share an example? Sure. Kevin, I would like to approach this question in twofold. 90% it has changed. It's completely changed, 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 the hidden elements. But 10% it is constant. When I talk about 10%, what is constant with an example is on the, the value systems of the company. The, for example, if you see Shoba, passion at work, it's our philosophy. So it's going to be constant all across. But what is changing? If you see the iceberg model, on the top, I'll say that it's employees. Below that, what is hidden, which we have to hiring the right talent with competent people, and in terms of policies and processes, which keeps on changing. Some of the areas is completely hidden. And we need to be transparent. We need to use, particularly in this industry, new age tools. The lot of presentations were there in the morning talking about the new age tools. So that is something which is missing in this industry, which is completely hidden. So I, I, in our industry, we need to concentrate more onto the new age tools and techniques, where, which will help us in developing the competencies and in developing the leaderships. And we need to look at leadership at all levels. So if you know by the statistics, only 7% in an organization are decision makers. Particularly in a real estate industry, many of the real estate industries are entrepreneurial driven industries. They're not big corporates. So the company I represented, it's into a, a generation of entrepreneurs. So for them, we need, to, we need to do leadership at all levels. Bottom of the pyramid, middle, and the top of the pyramid. So leadership development, as uh, uh, Rajnikanth was mentioning, people in this industry, they need to invest more onto people development. I completely agree with them. Well, thank you for highlighting one of those hidden